As we heard at the beginning of Mass, today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, the World Day of the Poor, and also the very last Sunday of our church year. There are 33 weeks in Ordinary Time. Next weekend is the Feast of Christ the King that culminates the church year, and then the following Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, which marks the beginning of a new year of following Jesus through the expectation of his coming, his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension. And on the 33rd Sunday of the year, each year the Church gives us readings that help us reflect on the end times. And the readings are a reminder, not a threat, but a loving reminder that the world as we know it and our lives as we know them will one day end. The world will end, we will die. The first reading from the book of Daniel and the passage that we just heard from St. Mark's Gospel are examples of a kind of literature, a genre of literature called apocalyptic literature. And the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, is the very best example of this kind of literature in the Bible. And apocalyptic literature is meant to give hope during times of suffering, during times of persecution. Apocalyptic literature is filled with incredible images and symbols that create an underground literature. By the time the book of Revelation was written and Rome had set its sights on destroying Christianity, you couldn't go around calling the Roman Emperor the devil without getting into very serious trouble. And so the battle between Rome and the early Christians plays out in images almost like from science fiction. We can read it today and we can get lost in all the images and symbols and a lot of people do. But for the early Christians, what was important in reading this kind of literature was how it all ends. And apocalyptic literature is kind of like reading the last chapter of a murder mystery and knowing then all through the book that in the end the butler really did do it and the kindly librarian will be found, will be found innocent. And so because we already know the ending, we survive the ups and downs of the novel knowing that all will turn out well in the end. We still have to read through the ups and downs, the twists and turns of the novel, but all the while knowing how it turns out in the end. And so too for the children of Israel, facing possible extinction from the Babylonians, and then for Christians facing persecution, first from the synagogue, and then by the time Mark's Gospel was written, from Rome. These passages of apocalyptic writing are meant to remind people that the last chapter of human history has already been written, and in the end, God makes all things right. We still have to live through the persecutions and trials, the ups and downs, but in the end, God wins. And so borrowing from this genre of writing, knowing the difficulties that his followers would face, Jesus reminds them that the day of the Lord will come and Jesus will return and the kingdom he preached and that the church is called to foretell will be established and God will be all in all. You know, at Mass during Advent, in a special way, the church invites us to pray that we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior. We wait in joyful hope for Jesus' return, the day of the Lord. And we wait in joyful hope precisely because we know how everything is going to play out. We look forward to Jesus' return, whether that be at the moment of our death or when history is consummated and the world as we know it ends, not with fear and trepidation, but with joyful hope. What's the vision with which we live our lives? You know, I think John says it so well in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. And the one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. These certainly were words of great encouragement to people who were being ostracized and arrested and thrown to the wild beast for their faith in Jesus. Words of encouragement to us as we see a culture taking shape that openly mocks so many of the things that Jesus has taught us. A culture that would fine a person thousands of dollars and imprison them for up to two years for tampering with the nest of a bald eagle and jeopardizing the eggs in the nest and yet legalize the killing of its own young in the womb of its mother. If we didn't know how it will all turn out, we would have reason to despair. But we do not despair because we do know how it all turns out. Life as we know it will one day end, either by our own death or by the end of the world. You know, there was a time when in the church when we gave a lot more emphasis to death and judgment, heaven and hell and purgatory. There was a time when perhaps we gave so much attention to the last things that we forgot the present things. There was a time when that emphasis caused us to forget the joy of living and the wonderful gift of life that we experience here on earth. 
But the pendulum swings, and perhaps today we give so much emphasis to the present things that we forget the last things. We speak so little of death and judgment, heaven and hell and purgatory, that perhaps we grow up thinking that this is all there is. We grow up thinking that this is our final destination, and we dig our heels in so deeply that this were in this world that we are surprised by death. Someone dies and we ask, how could this have happened, when in fact we were all born to die? The Church wants to remind us this weekend that just as certain as the trees lose their leaves in the fall, so too each one of us will die and our very world will pass away. And the Church as a good mother doesn't want us to be surprised by death or caught off guard. When or how it will happen, we don't know. The fact that it will happen is important. And it's important because in knowing that we will die, knowing that we will be called to give an account of how we have used the incredible gift of our life here on earth determines how we live here and now. Many years ago, Mitch Albin wrote a beautiful book, Tuesdays with Maury, and it records the wisdom that his friend and teacher, Maury Schwartz, shared with him in the final months of his life as he was preparing to die. And in one passage of the book, Maury imparts this wisdom. Once we learn how to die, we learn how to live. Once we learn how to die, we learn how to live. And I think that is what the scriptures are about this weekend. Once Maury knew that he was going to die, when it was no longer just a theoretical abstraction, he began to see life in a new way. He lived it for the gift that it really is. We can very easily live our lives on automatic pilot, taking everything and everyone for granted, taking life itself for granted, taking God for granted. We can live our lives thinking that we have a right to everything and everyone and forgetting that everything, absolute everything, is gift. We come to the end of a church year. If I knew that this year was going to be the very last year of my life here on earth, how would I live it? What changes would I make in my priorities? How would I respond to the opportunity I have to follow Jesus through one more liturgical year, through his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension? Whether this is the last year of my life here on earth or not, no one knows but God. But that we will die and that the world will one day end is for certain. Death, judgment, heaven, hell, purgatory, these are the last things. And Jesus reminds us of them, not to terrify us, but to help us to be prepared because it is learning to die that we learn to live. And because we are privileged to know how it all turns out in the end, let us live the joys and the sorrows of this present time in peace and in joyful expectation of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have read the book and we know that the end is not really the end at all.